Hi guys, this week we're testing the Hyundai Veloster Street Edition. Um, this is based on the Series 2 top of the range Veloster Turbo. And as you can see, it gets a few sporty highlights, such as the black front grille, uh, 18 inch raised alloy wheels, black side skirts, black side mirrors, and some black trimmings around the window. There's also a black spoiler at the back and a diffuser underneath. So in Australia, this is priced from around $35,000 for the manual transmission version, which is what we've got here. Um, and for that sort of money, uh, it's going up against some pretty serious competitions. So you've got the Toyota 86 and the Mazda MX-5. Um, you've also got the Volkswagen Polo GTI. Now I know that's not quite this uh, segment of vehicle, but if I had $35,000, that'll definitely be in my equation somewhere. Hyundai doesn't really market this as a proper sports car like the uh, like the rivals that I've just mentioned. Um, it hasn't been developed uh, extensively on a track, for instance. It's more practical-minded um, and meant to reach a broader audience, so to speak. So more of the more of more buyers can have a bit of fun with it, whereas the uh, the Toyota 86 and the MX-5 uh, are really for uh, you know very serious driving enthusiasts. With the special edition, there's no changes under the bonnet. Um, it's the same 1.6 litre turbocharged four cylinder engine, uh, producing 150 kilowatts and 265 newton meters. Um, that puts it about on par with the Toyota 86 and a little bit more than the MX-5, although the MX-5 is a lot lighter. Let's start it up and have a quick listen. So it's got a bit of a bassy note to it. Um, you can also hear the turbo whistle as well, just a little bit. Um, when you're driving along, you can't hear it so much. Just that I've got the, uh, the bonnet up. Although there's no engine modifications, um, Hyundai, or Hyundai Australia specifically actually, um, have changed or recalibrated the suspension um, and also recalibrated the steering for a sharper setting. What sets the Veloster apart from the rivals um, is the body, body style. So from this side it's a, a coupe or a, a two-door hatch but then if we go around to the other side it's actually a more conventional five-door hatch with a, a door for the rear passengers. Um, this is the only car on the market that does this uh, as far as I'm aware apart from maybe the, um, the mini, some of the old minis um, but yeah it, it provides access to the back and makes it a bit more practical um, certainly more practical than the Toyota 86. There's reasonable room in here. I mean, it's not a uh, it's not a large car, um, but my head is very close to that window there. But legroom is actually pretty good. There's no seat in the middle, so this is just a four seat vehicle, like the the Toyota 86 actually. So yeah, on this side you've just got a typical coupe layout with no door. It's pretty interesting. Uh, certainly a conversation starter. And in the very back you've got a, uh, a typical hatch layout. Um, the seats can be folded down to give you a bit more room. We'll have a look in the front. You get the same uh, seats that are in the Veloster Turbo, the top of the range Veloster Turbo, except you've got this blue highlighting. Um, you've also got blue seat belts as, as well. I like these seatbelt holders because you don't have to reach all the way back. It is pretty sporty in here with the blue highlights, um, but for me it is still a Hyundai and it's, I don't know, it's a bit cheap, so there's a lot of plastic, monotone plastic as well, it's all the same colour, um, although they have tried to divide it up with some different textures. This isn't an expensive car, so you can't expect too much. Um, but I think most of the rivals that I mentioned before um, do offer a higher quality interior. Let's take it for a drive and see how it goes. Now you can feel the steering is sharper than the, the regular Veloster Turbo. Um, it just feels like it's a bit more eager to turn in. But like the regular version, 
there's no real feel to it. Um, it this, it's not really inviting. It doesn't communicate exactly what the front wheels or rear wheels are doing um, like some of the rivals do. It handles good though. The chassis is, feels pretty stiff. Um, there is a bit of body roll, but uh, what you get from in return for that is a uh, pretty good ride. So over this bumpy road, um, it's, it's pretty smooth. Engine performance is pretty good. Um, 150 kilowatts does translate to a decent uh, 0 to 100 time, just under 7 seconds I think. But the engine sound for me is, yeah, it's, it's pretty boring. It sounds a bit like a vacuum cleaner actually. It would be nice to have some, uh, just to heighten the, the driving experience with a, with a better sound. Although it does need a limited slip at the front, limited slip differential. Because it does um, waste away some of the power to wheel spin. So on first impressions, uh, it is, it's an attractive car, it definitely looks good, um, especially with the street, street edition pack, uh, stands out on the road. But in terms of a driver's car, it's not quite at the level of the, uh, the rivals that I mentioned before. Um, so for me, if I was going to spend $35,000 on, on a sports car, I would, I would look to the rivals first before looking to this. On the other hand, if you just want a practical, uh, more everyday car that's got some sporting credentials, then this could be a good option for you. I think this will appeal to the masses better than some of the, uh, the rivals that I mentioned because in some of those you need to be driving at sort of 9 tenths or 10 tenths uh, to experience and appreciate the level of engineering whereas this um, you only need to be driving at sort of 50 percent 60 percent just to experience a bit of fun and a bit of sportiness um, when you do push it beyond that uh, it does start to uh, to lack in certain areas we'll put together a more in-depth uh, review on the website soon including our performance video until then thanks for watching